Three years ago, Monica Long, a registered nurse with no history of illness, had a suspicious mammogram. After a biopsy, four words got her doctor's attention on the pathology report. Ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, is the earliest stage of breast cancer. They said that it was DCIS. They found it very early, my cancer. And the treatment, what they would do, would recommend that you go into surgery. I decided to do what they called a quadrantectomy, where they took about a quarter of the breast. And then I just prayed for the best. Never dawned on me that they could have been a mistake. But her new doctor says that her cancer diagnosis was wrong. This confusion has become increasingly common as pathologists help doctors diagnose breast cancer at an earlier, more survivable stage with advanced imaging tests. 30 years ago, most women were diagnosed with breast cancer when they felt a lump. The disease was already palpable. And DCIS can be identified by screening mammography when the patient is totally unaware of any abnormality in her breast. So that's the goal, to make a diagnosis before the disease is even invasive. That's where the difficulty comes. As the field has gotten more complex, the potential for mistakes has grown. Now pathologists, whose job is to work in a lab rather than see patients, diagnose cancer using microscopic tissue samples, some the size of a few grains of salt. So time has changed when they will give you an orange-sized, you know, breast cancer and they tell you is it malignant or benign. Now we are dealing with, you know, 5 millimeter, 6 millimeter, 4 millimeter cancer. Dr. Shala Masood is an expert in breast pathology. She says a wide variation of skill and experience with these microscopic lesions has led to misdiagnoses. Errors are particularly common with cases of low-grade DCIS. When viewed under a microscope, DCIS has some of the same features of a less serious lesion called atypical ductal hyperplasia, or ADH. This distinction between atypical ductal hyperplasia and low-grade ductal carcinoma in situ is a 30 years history of confusion, differences in opinions, and under and over treatment. Dina Aguilar, a mother of three from Jacksonville, Florida, experienced this firsthand. Eight years ago, Aguilar had a needle biopsy of a lump in her breast that was worrying her. I knew it was gonna, they were gonna call and say, you're fine, it's nothing, you know, but that's not what happened. The pathologist called me, she said, um, I'm sorry, but you have cancer, breast cancer, and it's very aggressive form of breast cancer, and, and you're young, and so we have to treat it very aggressively. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, mastectomy, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and then hormone therapy. Aguilar was told she had both invasive cancer and DCIS, but the diagnosis felt wrong. So a few days before her scheduled mastectomy, she took her slides to the pathology department at another hospital to get a second opinion. We're trained to just trust our doctors, and our doctors are trained to trust the, the pathologist, you know. Oh, if they say it's cancer, it's cancer, you know. Everybody's human, everybody makes mistakes. I mean, you don't want to cut off somebody's breast if they didn't need to be cut off just because you trusted the pathology's report. Dr. Masood, the chair of the pathology department, reviewed Aguilar's case. When I looked at it, it didn't look cancer to me. But even when multiple pathologists look at the same slide, opinions can vary. Dr. Masood and several other pathologists who were consulted on the case each diagnosed something different. After a series of tests, doctors realized it wasn't cancer at all. And I said, how could that be? You know, how could you make a mistake like that? And then she showed me the slides and she said, really, this is hard stuff. You know, it's really, really hard to tell. With any big diagnosis of anything, you should get a second opinion and maybe even a third. But when it comes to a diagnosis of cancer, whose medical opinion can a patient trust? Hi, good morning. My name is Monica. I'm one of the care managers at Midwestern Cancer Hospital. After her earlier bout with breast cancer, Monica Long came face to face with that question. When you hear that word cancer, it's still a scary, scary diagnosis. After moving to a new city, she had a checkup with a new oncologist at a hospital specializing in cancer, just to make sure she was cancer-free. There's usually a good chance if you have it, it's going to come back. The doctor ordered a review of all of her medical records. The new pathologist discovered some shocking news. He told me that you know, I never had cancer. And I was like thrown back a little bit, like, 
And I remember the first words I said, well, who makes you, what makes you right and them wrong? Because, you know, I was diagnosed in Michigan and they were so sure that I had cancer. This is where experience reading these difficult lesions comes in. The American College of Pathologists recommends that one sees more than 250 breast cases a year to be expert in making a diagnosis. But Dr. Lynn V., the pathologist who performed Monica Long's original biopsy, had trouble passing his pathology board exam and had read only 40 to 50 breast biopsies that year. Instead of sending the tissues to a major cancer center, he used a free consultation from another pathology group in a small town 40 miles away. They confirmed his findings. Dr. V declined to be interviewed for this story, but stands by his original diagnosis. Monica Long is now suing for malpractice. I mean, I lost part of my breast for no reason. I think you could handle a disfigurement a little bit more if there was a real purpose for it, but to find out later I didn't need to do that. The Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation estimates that as many as 5,000 to 10,000 patients each year may have been misdiagnosed or inappropriately treated because of pathology errors. Dr. Masood hopes that this problem will lead to an increase in standards and guidelines for breast pathology. We need to raise the bar in breast pathology. Every single one of these over and under interpretation leads to under or over treatment. There may be a small number of them, but the significance of mistakes is very important no matter if you're, it happens in you know, 1% of the population.